everybody, and welcome back to the Engadget stage here at CES 2019. Now, today joining me on stage is Alexa and Echo Device Vice President Miriam Daniel. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to talk about Alexa Auto, which takes the thing that we have in our home that's been pretty static and we puts it in the car. Now, where did Amazon come up with the idea? Our customers send us uh, ideas all the time. So there was this one customer that actually took an Echo Dot and placed it in his car, connected it to his phone, and used it in his car and actually sent us pictures and videos of it. At about the same time, we were also thinking about how to increase the utility of Alexa. And there's a lot of things you do in the home that you want to continue to do during your commute. You know, like listening to the news, listening to music, uh, setting a reminder for yourself because you're out there and uh, you know you just thought of something. When we first started building an Echo, we thought the kitchen was the most challenging acoustic environment. And when we took it to the car, oh boy, it was like a war zone. We had not anticipated <laughs> that challenge. It was this, this just reverberation in the car. There uh -huh. is airflow from vents. There's people sitting in closed spaces, all talking. There's mm -hmm. music playing in a closed space. And then there's road noise from outside. From a hardware perspective, we had to make sure we were optimizing Alexa to hear you well in the, such noisy acoustic environment. I mean, when you talk about hardware, there's other things we had to do to optimize it for the car that we don't think about in the home. You know, in the home, like you said, it's static. You don't move it around. So when you plug it in, you leave it there. By the time the electronics in your dashboard light up, you want Alexa to be ready and available to you, right? So we had to optimize the startup time. We had to optimize for distractionless driving. We tried to make some of Alexa's responses more brief. Yeah, at home, it's okay to say, go to the app and link the skill, right? Yeah. But if you're in the car, we really don't want to do that. We want to say, when it is safe to do so, go link your skill. We also think about even distraction from the LED. The ring takes different patterns and colors for thinking, listening, speaking, uh, message waiting for you, incoming call, you know, all of those have different LED patterns. But when you're in a car, daytime, night driving, yeah. you don't want that light to get distracting, uh -huh. right? So we had to come up with subtle LED patterns that would tell you what you need to know, maybe you know, compensate with more ear cons so that you can hear rather than want to go see it. Third, we also had to think about what services would add the most usefulness yeah. in the car, right? Like, there's the standard thing, you want music, right? Wherever you go, you want music. That's clear to everybody. But there's also, you know, you might want to say, when I leave home, turn off all the lights in the house, uh -huh. right? So that's a location-specific service. We had to think about what additional services would add utility in the car, in addition to music and, you know, getting uh, your news, uh -huh. or, um, you know, just setting reminders, you know, like that you would want to do, that you might do already. Everything you do at home, you can still do in the car, right? Yeah. It, and it's just that much more productive in the car. Even though we did a ton of beta testing with different drive conditions in different cities, um, we, invited customers to come test it with us and give us more feedback. And it's not just the noise and acoustic level, it is also different cars, have, even the Bluetooth stacks don't work the same, uh -huh. right? Um, and even for the same model from three years ago to now, the Bluetooth stacks work differently. Yeah. So we had to test with a multitude of phones, multitude of Bluetooth stacks, multitude of car makes and models, and so going out and inviting customers to come help shape the product gives us a much more, uh, much bigger landscape and much variety that we can then use to continue tuning this. There's just no way we can predict all possible conditions. What does the team learn that it could actually move back to the home environment? Making our models resilient for one environment actually carries over and helps us in another environment too because we're learning with much bigger data sets right now. There's also customer behavior that we're learning about, right? Like, um, if you've listened to Audible at home, yeah. you, you take that with you to the car and you just say, resume this book and you know now you get the same experience. Taking the Alexa experience with you wherever you go gives you the seamless continuity of your, of your experience as well. But we're also learning 
learning the other way around, right? Some things work better, you know, because it's on the go. You search for parking and Alexa can suggest some parking spaces for you and you know where to go. Uh, now think about some of these parking skills allow you to prepay for parking and reserve your parking too. So now you could do that at home before you leave as well. Yeah. So, you know, we will see the benefit of taking your experiences from home to on the go, but also bringing back experiences from on the go back to the home. The device maker side, they're, um, you know, they're benefiting from the robust models we're creating, they're benefiting from the additional services we're enabling, you know, the ability, for example, location-based reminders and routines when we are, you know, uh, customer uses them, whether it's with ours or with Anchor or Garmin, you know, they will all get the same kind of experience. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will, we're also working with the skill partners and they're thinking about, oh, you know, if, if this is how the skill worked when you were in the house, now when you're on the go, I have an additional variable that I can use to personalize your experience. And how easy do you make it for, for, for partners, for developers, for hardware makers to put Alexa in a device? What we're hearing is that we are making it tremendously easy for them. We've reduced the friction for them. Appliance makers, they don't have to worry about creating more cloud services. They don't have to worry about you know over-the-air updates. They don't have to worry about things that they haven't worried about until now. But they still want to make the appliances smart. So the Alexa Connect Kit gives everything out of the box for them. Right, so now you can have Procter & Gamble, you can have LG, you can have Hamilton Beach, they're all now making the appliances smart. So that's possible because we've done a lot of the work for them and uh -huh. we are, the ability for them to integrate is much easier and less friction. We have a Alexa Auto SDK. Once you integrate it, you get all the Alexa services. Yeah. Right. So we, we do make it easy, but it's not us saying it, our partners are telling us that. We're really, really excited to see all the auto integrations that you're seeing here at CES. Um, and But there's also, we think about, there's hundreds of millions of cars out there and customers out there that don't have the newer cars with Alexa yeah. integrated. So we want to make sure that we are uh, meeting the needs of all kind, all of our customers, mm -hmm. right? So Echo Autos out there, if you don't have one of those cars, it's like a technology adoption curve, mm -hmm. right? You start off as discrete devices, uh -huh. and as you get more comfortable with it, you integrate it. The cars that are out there, some of them have Bluetooth, some of them don't have Bluetooth, they have just an aux connection, and so we wanted to make sure that for the period where you have not yet upgraded or you've just handed off your car to your kid or whatever, you can still use something like an Echo Auto. And you know, over time, households will have more seamlessly integrated assistance in their cars. You get to keep your eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. Voice is the best interaction model for the car. The people who, who do add this to their vehicle, what do you think is going to be the, the biggest benefit for them? I think they're going to see their productivity go up. I just get in the car and say, Alexa, read my flash briefing. And all my news sources are going one after the other. Five, six minutes, I have my news for the day. Instead of like trying to jot something down or trying uh -huh. to memorize something, like every time I think of something, like Alexa, remind me to do this. I am able to actually even send messages to my family and they can say, you know, on my way home, you know, uh -huh. and I can drop in and talk to my children, uh -huh. you know, without having to, you know, do anything complicated and pick up your phone. So I think, you know, people are going to see that definitely better, less distraction driving. You never knew you wanted it yes. this badly, right? But yes. once you start using it and you see, start seeing how simple it is, you start seeing how convenient it is, how many steps of friction it has cut out for you, then you're like, how did I live without this? Yeah. It's changing the way people interact. Um, it's changing the way people feel about voice interaction as well, uh, making them more comfortable. So yeah, you know, sometimes there are those things that are transformative, and I and we truly think that uh, voice is a big transformative experience. It's actually the most natural experience. You don't have to learn something new. Uh -huh. right? You just have to speak, which you all, we all know how to do really well. Music is still the number one use case, whether uh -huh. you're in the home or in the car. Then we're seeing information as the number one use case. So people asking questions because they want quick answers. Yeah. It's kind of common between the home environment and the car environment. But after those two, what we're seeing is news, uh -huh. is a high value use case in the car. Reminders, we are seeing the patterns that, you know, people, there's some common stuff between home and on the go, but there's a lot of productivity use cases that come in as well. There are different uh, plans. You can have a family plan. Uh -huh. So when you have a family plan, you can have multiple streams oh, okay. playing on your account, right? Uh -huh. But if you have a single device plan, then you can only play on one device at a time. Uh, okay. Miriam Daniel, uh, Vice President of Alexa Devices and Echo.
Um, stay tuned for more CES coverage from the Engadget stage. Thank you. Thank you.